touch on chapter 2. And then that should give us enough to do a lab. So questions, uh, of course, decimal is a number system that most of us understand. Even though most of y'all didn't know that when we talk about the base of a number system, most of y'all learn it's a number of numerical combinations, but it's actually the base of the exponent that we use, right? Uh, then we talked about binary. Anybody any questions on binary? Of course, binary is the language of a computer. Uh, it won't come into play much in this class. It'll definitely come to play in uh, PLC 2. Um, it might pop up in this class. I'm, I'm not sure. Like I said, it's been... Uh, then we talked about octal, which is a base 8 number system. And if we're going to go between octal and decimal and decimal and octal, uh, normally what I would do is I'd go through binary if I wanted to go through and not and not use a calculator. So the problem is uh, uh, when I start dealing with powers of eight, you know it goes it goes one, and then it jumps up to eight, then it jumps up to sixty-four, then it jumps up to two fifty-six, right? Four thousand nine six. So if I've got a seven, I, my math would be pretty complicated. But if I've got a, a, a binary number, let me bring up a, a, a blank of PowerPoint so I can make a white screen so I could uh, draw on it. So if I was just to make up a, 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 a optical number. Now the biggest possible number a uh, digit I could have is seven, right? Zero through uh, seven. Uh, one, five, three, uh, six. Okay. And then, of course, what I usually do is I put a little subscript down here so you'll know what base I'm dealing with. It has nothing to do with powers because this is a legal number. This combination of digits would be legal in three different bases. It would be legal in base 10. It would be legal in base 8, and it would be legal in base 16. Perfectly legal. But each one of them would have a different weight, right? You understand? So we could come up here and do some math, and I gave you all a powers chart, and we could do it that way. But what I would do is I would, and you can't, uh, oh. inside the combination, you can't drop leading zeros in here. The only place it's legal to drop leading zeros is over here. Uh, so what I would do is we, we're dealing with three-bit binary patterns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's my eight combinations. So with three bits of binary, I've got ex eight, exactly eight combinations. With three bits of binary, I have exactly eight combinations. So what that means is I can use three bits of binary to represent every every octal digit. So what I would do is I, right here when I do the one, I would just write down the binary code for a one. And then when I came to the five, I would write down the binary code for a five. We're moving to the left, so for where, so increasing the weights, right? Uh, then I'd write down the binary code for a three, and then I'd write down the binary code for a six, and I just converted that number to binary. Now, if I wanted to find the weights now, now I'm dealing with very, uh, a, an easy combination where I could come up here and I can do what? I go 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, Now, when you live, when you when you deal with binary a lot, you, I'm not multiplying these by two in my head. I I know the weights of the binary. 
So what I, what would I do to get this to decimal? And why do we need to get the number to decimal? Computer don't care about what number system. Computers don't only use one number system. They use binary. It's, yeah, I mean, if I, if I, I have no idea. I look at this number right here and I think it's an extremely big number. Because I'm, I'm splitting it off in threes, right? You understand? I mean, I'm thinking about, you know, that'd be hundred, that'd be a, a hundred thousand, that would be a million. So I'm thinking about eleven billion, eleven million, you know, one hundred one thousand one. That's what I see in my head. So it looks like an extremely big number, but it's not, right? Compared to what it would be, uh, this combination would be in digital. So what I would do is I'd add uh, just the numbers. I add just the bit positions that have a one in it. So I do 1,024. If I write it down right, don't ask me where I got that number from. <laughs> I would write down 2,048. I don't know where I pull that number in. 1,024. Then I drop over here. The next would be what? 128. That's a four, guys. And then I'd add a 64, and then I'd add a 32, and then I'd add a 9. Because I can add 8 and 1 in my head, right? <laughs> in fact, a lot of these. And then I would add all this up, and that would give me my decimal equivalent. Or I could come up, and if I have an engineering, if I have a, a calculator, some scientific calculators do this, Windows calculators. Uh, you come in and just put it in the, the so I'm going to change it over to the uh, programmer's calculator and I'm going to say what base we got octal and I could come up in or six three now notice it grayed out eight and nine because those combinations are, are no longer legal, uh, legal right uh, three five one and I could come up here and look at there that I could look at it in binary Notice one one zero zero one 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 zero one zero zero six. See how? You, and all you got to do is just be able to know these these three bit binary patterns. And then when I convert it to decimal, anybody added it up yet? Three thousand. I knew it was going to be an odd number. Now why did I know my decimal number was going to be an odd number? Can you write that? Yeah, this right here determines if your number is odd. So what we're saying is, if you know the, if you know the binary number is odd, then you better expect a, an odd decimal number, right? You understand? So if you went through the math, it's the 3305? What did you show? That's the decimal way. You add all these together. Oh. What's that? Sixty-three fifty-one equals in base A equals one one zero zero one 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 zero one zero zero one in binary equals three thousand thirty-five in base ten. So what you're doing, all those numbers are equal to each other. It's just that what we're doing is we're looking at the same number in three different bases. Now, of course, we know we know base ten. So this is why we need to be able to go between binary, between decimal and binary. So decimal to binary, you can use division. It's up to you. Divide by two, or you can use subtraction. Normally, we teach subtraction. Now, once you've got the number in binary, <laughs> then going to, going to octal is no big deal. So I could just make up a binary number. And how would I take that to octal? I just split it into groups of three, starting at the least significant bit. I'd come over here, I'd say one, two, three. You can't just start anywhere. You gotta start from the least significant bit. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three. And then I would write down the octal number that that three bit pattern wrote. That what would this be? Five. Five. What would this be? Five. Five. What would this be? Seven. Six. Two. In base eight. That's how easy. It is. I mean, to me, to me, it's extremely easy to go between those between those two bases. So, which would be easier for me to call out to you if I was going to convey information to you? 
a, a binary number, which would be easier for, for me to do it as a PLC? Would it be in binary or would it be in octal? Well, it's going to be in octal, right? You understand. Or it's going to be in a higher level base because even if I call this out, if I erase this and I had this written up here on my board and I said 10110111101011, Nobody in the class forgot that right. And even if you get a big long binary number, you can't memorize that thing, so you're constantly doing this. And then what do you lose? Well, you lose track. So even a big binary number, it would be hard for you to even do what? What's the name? Yeah, it's, in, it's down there. You got your key? Yeah, all the 504s is, is getting a... That's the battery one. Yeah, but it won't it won't it won't connect to the PLC. I mean so you can't connect to look at the status to get the fault. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Can you take a break to come in and I'll go look? Yeah. We're trying to get enough PLCs up to teach the class guys. We got it. Anybody come in while I've gone? Yeah. What what what's your name? Mr. Baldwin, you hadn't done your uh, syllabus agreement yet on Blackboard. What's that? Okay. You're supposed to do a, uh, there's an assignment up there called First Week's Assignments and Quizzes on Blackboard. Uh, all that was due last Friday. But there's an syllabus, there's a syllabus agreement that is required that everybody read the syllabus for the course. And that, the syllabus is up on Blackboard too. And this is your uh, first, here's the, uh, Syllabus brief. Uh, for programmable controllers. It's a numbering system conversion cover. That's the last brief I have. I don't know. Have you went? Have you been? I've, I've I've graded, not the last attempt. I have to go back and grade because there's no way in the world I can set up it to grade a phone number because there's no way in the world it knows your phone number, and there's no way I can grade. Well, if it's got a it's got a yellow circle, it means you submitted it, but I just hadn't come back and graded it. No, the syllabus agreement is the one that, that, that it's showing that you haven't submitted. So what I get is I got a little blue circle up there. It means you attempted it, but you didn't submit it. <coughs> so let's look at our next number system. This is called hexadecimal. Hex meaning six and decimal meaning ten. Hexadecimal is a base 16 number system. And this is another one that we usually don't go between. If I was going to use hex, hexadecimal, most people incorrectly call it hex, by the way, because hex is six, but just that everybody calls it hex. But actually, the true term is hexadecimal. And going between uh, uh, hexade going between uh, uh, hexadecimal and decimal is not easy. Uh, Basically, you use the division method, but when you divide, you got to keep up with a fraction, and it's a little more complicated. Normally, uh, what we need to learn hexadecimal for is to go between uh, hexadecimal and binary. For hexadecimal, we have to have three symbols. We have to have ten symbols that represent the digits. So we use the same symbols that we use in the base ten numbering system. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, but still we've got to have 
16 combinations for every digit. So what we do is we shift and switch to the letters of the alphabet, A, B, C, D, E, and L. And there's our 16 combinations. Each digit holds a weight of 16 raised to a power. This is, gets very, very complicated. Okay. Because what you're doing here is you're going... Uh, So I might have a number that looks like this, you know, 1, B, C, A, 4, and then that's base 16. Of course, it's obvious that's base 16. And then what we would do is this would hold the weight of 16 to the 0, this would hold the weight of 16 to the 1st, this would hold the weight of 16 to the 2nd. Let me drop this number back up quite a bit. This is a big number. Let's do a, let's do a small number. Uh, C one three. Now, this is sixteen to the zero. This is sixteen to the first. This would be sixteen to the second. Now the problem is, is that none of this is base ten. So what I would have to do first of all is I would have to know what it's, if I'm going to convert it to base ten, then I've got to get everything in base ten, right? You understand? So I would come up here and count in hex zero one two three four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. What comes next? A. a, B, C, D, E, and F. And then I would come down here and I would write what these actually equal to in the decimal numbering system. Of course, this would be zero, this would be one, this would be two, uh, this would be three, this would be four, this would be five, this would be six. So far, so good, right? This would be seven, this would be eight. This would be 9, but this is going to be equal to what in decimal? 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. And there's my 16 combinations. Well, what I would do, first of all, I have to get everything to decimal. So, of course, I know, uh, so I've got 3 raised to the 16 to the 0 power. That's a 1, right? You understand that? And then I've got a 1 raised to the 16th power, that's 16. Then i got a C, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put 12 raised to 16 squared. What's that equal to? Y'all got a power chart, right? Huh? Okay. Huh? 256. Then what I would do is I would take the, all the decimal numbers and I would say 12 times 256, right? plus 1 times 16 plus 3. And then whatever I came up with, that would be the decimal equivalent. Okay? I just texted you a picture of the way it needs to be programmed in. Okay. So uh, we forgot to change the swap to the rack. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. And if the rack is not 7, you error every time. So the processor, the rack, and the I.O. Yes. Okay. What we're doing is 16 squared. Okay, so if you look, well, we gave you all this power chart, right? And I've got, I've got you powers of 16 down there. And so I'll find 16 to the second is 256. 16 to the third would be 4,096. It's 5,536. So what we do to get this into decimal is we convert everything to what? So instead of using powers of 16, I use the decimal equivalent of the powers of 16. And the way it works is you take this number, multiply it by that number. You take this number, multiply it by that. You take this, multiply it by that, and add all those answers together. And that would give you the decimal equivalent. Sure, let's put a little bigger number. Uh, let's do one, three, four, six. Now, this is the problem we have right here. One, three, four, six. That's that number is legal in the decimal numbering system. That so in decimal that would be one thousand three hundred and forty-six. In octal, that's a legal number in octal, and this would be a legal number in hex, right? You understand? But these suckers don't hold weights of tens. These these guys hold weights of sixteens. 
I don't know. I didn't do it. Uh, and then after that, we're going to put a little number down at the bottom. If you, want. you should. You could, but like on on a, on a worksheet, it says convert the following numbers to hex. Well, if I say convert the following numbers to hex, then I expect the number to be in hex, right? You understand? It's just me when I write all these numbers up here. I'm going to tell you what what base. I understand, Lord. Three thousand nine hundred. Well, no, C one three is in hex. C13 is in hex, hexadecimal. Okay. That, what you gave me, that 3,000 decimal. decimal. So now you get a fill, a fill of the weight, because once we get it in decimal, you have a fill of the weight of the number. If you know what it is, it's not. It's just that you don't know what I'm doing up here, so I'm going to label it. Yeah. yeah, this is me. What I'm doing is I'm putting that up there because this would be this would be a legal octal number. It would be a legal decimal number, but it's a legal hexadecimal number. Now which one has the most weight? The decimal number, the hexadecimal number, or the or, or did I say that right? The octal number, the decimal number, the hexadecimal number. Which which is big? Huh? No, they're not, well they're not not no, they're not equal. Because all I'm doing is I'm seeing the number in hexadecimal. So if I say 1,346 base 10, if I say 1,346 base 8, or if I say 1,346 decimal, which number is actually the biggest number? Huh? Well, the only way I can do it is if I get every one of them in the, in the weighted number system that I understand. Right? You understand? So let's convert this to hex. I mean, let's convert it to decimal. So this is going to be 16 to the first, which is 1. This is going to be 16, uh, this the 0, I'm sorry. Uh, this would be 16 to the first is 16. 16 to the third is 256. And 16 to the first is 4,096. I mean, 16 to the third. So what would I do? Well, I would say 1 times 4,096. Right here you said, now you got over the top of that six, you got one, and on the top of the six, you got one. I don't know what you mean. He was looking and said, like, you're strong. So this is 16 to the zero. This is 16 to the first. This is 16 squared. This is 256. And then this is 16 to the third. So what we can do is we can look at this power chart and get the decimal equivalent of all of those powers. So if I look at 16 to the third, it says it's 4,096, right? 16 to the second is 256. 16 to the first is 16. So what we're doing is we're getting the number, all everything in decimal. Now here, uh, I had to convert the C to its decimal equivalent. The one is already in its decimal equivalent, right? You understand? The three is already in the decimal equivalent. These are already all in their decimal equivalent. So now all I have to do is just take this and multiply it by the equivalent decimal weight. Instead of 16 to the third, 16 to the third is actually the true weight of that number, but I don't understand 16 to the third. I understand 4,096, right? You understand? So what we do to get this to the decimal is we convert everything to what? To its decimal equivalent. So up here, what did I use? I didn't use C. I used the decimal equivalent of C. Instead of using 16 squared, I used the decimal equivalent of 16 squared. Then when I multiply this times this, that gives me the actual decimal weight that that C holds in the number. So what would the weight? What would the decimal weight of this number be? What's that? Which I should expect it. Now here it gets a little, little more complicated because I know that uh, 2, 4, 6, 8 are even, but also uh, A, C, and E are even. So that means that this number ends with an, a 0, ends with a, with a 0. Uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, A, A, C, E. I know this is an even uh, uh, hex number. And I, my, so that means my decimal number had better be what? 
even. So an even number in any base is an even number in any base. Does that make sense? So if I convert this to binary, then it's going to be an even binary number. You'll be amazed. It, it, it's so easy to go between these bases. And this is the predominant base now. PLCs uh, still support octal because this was this was the first numbering system that that the PLCs used to represent large binary numbers. Would it be wrong if you get to sixteen as well? No, that's me. That's so. That's so I can make sure you understand what base I'm writing up here on the on the board. So if I come up here and write this number right here, how much is that number equal to? We don't know. We know it's odd. But this could be. This is a legal number in binary. This is a legal number in decimal. This is a legal number in hexadecimal. This is a legal number in octal. This is legal. But they all hold different weights depending on which numbering systems we deal with. So what I want to do, when I throw a number up here on the board, what am I going to do? I'm going to put a little subscript on it indicating the base. And then that way you'll say, okay, you know, I know this is a really big number or it's a really small number. So binary is, is only, each, each, each digit of the binary number system only has two combinations. So that means it's going to take a lot of bits to represent numbers, big numbers. Octal's better. Well, octal has eight, but it's still going to, decimal, the number would appear smaller. Octal's going to, the number's going to appear a little bigger because it's only got what? Eight combinations. Hex numbers are going to appear, are going to appear to be the smallest number because they, they have a lot more combinations per digit. So what I'll do, what I'll do, what I'll do is I'll come up here and I'll put a little subscript down there so you'll know what? You'll know the base. Does that make sense? This is me. If you want to keep up with it, you say, well, I need to remember what this is, then you might subscript it too. It has no dealing with the weight of the number. It just identifies, well, it does, but it identifies the base. So that's me. It's just something that I got in the habit of doing because I know that this number is legal in all these bases. So in binary, when you're trying to figure out a way, it's, it either is or it isn't one of these numbers, right? You know what I mean? Zero, it's, I have no two. It's a zero or one. I mean, with that hexadecimal number, the one, three, four, six, and I say, it, it would be six times the no, its weight. Just as in binary. I don't know what you mean by six. It's, yeah, it'd be six times its, times weight, its weight, depending on where the position. But the zero is still legal, too. Weight. Yeah, okay. so I could still go A039, and okay. this would be okay. this would be a, a 1, 16, 256, but I wouldn't, do, I wouldn't use 256, right? You understand. But I can make this same kind of little chart only using the 16, and if there's a 4 under that, it carries the weight times the Times the weight of the number, yeah. So it carry the weight, the, the the decimal weight carries the weight of that number in decimal times the position in the number. And that's true on base ten. People, if you understand, if you really understood base ten, so so nine, four, three, base ten. This holds a weight of ten to the zero. This holds a weight of the ten to the first. This holds, and that's the base. This holds a weight of the ten to the third. Well, that nine, well, I want to see what this weight is. Well, instead of using 10 to the third, I'm going to put the decimal equivalent of 10 to the third, and I'll write down 1,000. Then I say, okay, 10 to the second is what? 100. 10 to the, 10 to the first is 10, and 10 to any number raised to the zero is 1. So I'd say, okay, what weight does the, does the 9 hold? Well, I'd say 9 times 1,000. And then I would say, um, and I'd say, okay, it holds a weight of nine thousand. And then I'd say, okay, three times a hundred, so three times a hundred would be three hundred. And then I'd say, okay, four times ten, four times ten would be forty. And then three times one would be three. And I would add all those numbers together, and I would come up with the decimal weight. Well, we're doing the same thing. This is the way base, base 10 works, but most people don't learn that. Most people learn units, 
ones, tens, hundreds, thousands. That's the way you learn it. But actually, when we say base 10, what we're doing, it, that is the exponent that we use for each digit. And it's every one of them pair, uh, carries a power of a base. So that's what exactly what we're doing. But instead of base 10, these are all, all what? Base 16. But I want to get this to decimal. So I say, okay, what is 16 to the third equal to? Well, I say, okay, I, I, if I have a calculator, I raise it, or I can look at this chart, and I say 16 and 30 is 4,096. And then to figure out the actual decimal weight, I take this decimal number. Now, this is decimal. This, this is a decimal representation or a decimal digit. The only problem we got is now if I've got these A, Bs, and Cs, what am I going to have to do? I'm going to have to multiply by their decimal equivalent. Not, not a C, I'm going to multiply by the decimal equivalent. And then I just add all those up, and that would give me the decimal weight of the number. Now, the decimal weight of the number is neat. Because that means I have a film another way. Now, going from base 16, going from decimal to base 16, what you would do is you would take the number, you'd start dividing it by 16. And every time you had a remainder, you would take that remainder and multiply it by 16 to get the whole number. So it's really hard to go from base de decimal to base. In fact, guys, we don't use hexadecimal to go from to go from hexadecimal to decimal. We don't use it that way. What we do is we use it to go to binary. So I've got to have a method of going directly from base 16 to binary, and I can do it just like that without even thinking about it. So how many combinations can a digit have? Well, it can have 16 combinations. How many combinations can four bits of binary have? 2 raised to the 4th, this gives you the number of combinations, that says 16. So every digit of base 16 has 16 combinations. 4 bits of binary has 16 combinations. You know how you separate them in 3? Well, for octal, you, can you do that for decimal? Too? No, not, not decimal. I mean not decimal, uh, hexadecimal. Wait, hexadecimal. Let's, let's, let's look so at it. How do you, do you separate them in 4? Groups of 4, yeah. Okay. So let's write down the combinations. First of all, let's look at the way we would count in binary. Let me break up my calculator. Uh, chart. Yes, I did. So this would be counting in decimal. We're very, we're, we're, we're very comfortable with counting in decimal, right? So eight, nine, I've run out of combinations for, for, for a digit. So what do we do? We add another digit and continue counting, right? So that. Now, if I come up here and count in octal, let me clear this. So there's zero. Then I'd have, uh, then we'd have one, sorry, two, three, four, five, six, seven. What would come next? I've run out of combinations. I've run out of combinations for a digit. What do we do in decimal? Well, we add another digit, set it to one, and continue on. So that would be eight, nine, ten, and be a ten. When you do that, I said in my mind, I said, am I saying that wrong? Should I say eight? No. No, you should say, you should count in octal. So you, and you wouldn't say, t technically, most most people that's dealt with the base a lot, they still use 10, they use, still use 15, 20, 20, they still use that terminology. Uh, technically, when you go to another base besides decimal, you should just call the digit. So we'd say one seven. Then it goes to two zero. Then I've run out of combinations here, so we're going to increment the next digit and go to three zero, right? You see that? This is counting in base eight. And then when I get up to seven zero, what are we going to do? What am I going to do? I add another one. Right, you understand. 
So that's not 100 base 10, that's 100 base 8. That's counting in base 8. This would be counting in base 16. So it starts off with zero, right? Oops, thank you. I can switch over, it's not going to change because the digit's equal. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F. I've run out of combinations. What we're going to do? Put a one over there and go to one zero. Now one zero is always if you if you convert one zero to decimal, it's always the base. So one zero in base sixteen would be equal to sixteen in base ten. And I'll just continue on. F two zero F three zero and then I'll get all the way up to what? FF. This is two hundred and fifty five. But what's so neat, this right here is equal to two hundred and fifty five, but it's only taking two digits of hexadecimal. So two hundred representing representing two hundred and fifty five in base 10 would represent, would need three digits, right? You understand? A, zero, B, 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 L. So there's 255. And then I come up here, if I was to look at this in decimal, so I can do 255 with hex with two digits. It takes three digits of base 10. It takes three digits of base 8 right now, but look, the number appears to be bigger. So the number in my head, so the optal number appears to be bigger than the decimal number because I'm looking at it in decimal. But you have to remember, octal only has eight combinations per digit. If I do it in binary, it's going to take a lot of digits, right? You understand that? It's going to take a lot of digits. So I can represent extremely large decimal numbers. We can just make up one. So I'm going to put this in decimal. I need to use my pen here. Okay, so that's a decimal number. The same number in hexadecimal. The same number in octal. And I don't, the calculator can't do the binary. Yeah, good. This is a huge calculator. So that's the same number of binary. Well, I was going to give you a real large binary number. Which would you, what, which would you prefer? Yeah, because if it was decimal, I, I, I have no idea what the binary number looks like, right? You understand that? Uh, either hex or octal. And like I said, so what we use, we use these numbering systems to represent real large dec uh, uh, decimal numbers or real large binary numbers. So let's see, uh, we, we go we go to, uh, so on your on your numbers chart, you know I've got, I've given you the binary patterns that represent the hex digits. But it's, it's, it's simply a 1248 code. I mean, so 1248. So all we're dealing with binary patterns, 1248. So understand what I'm talking about. So that's all we can do. So I can come up here. Uh, I know uh, this right here. Zero, 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 zero would represent a hex zero. And I, all I'm looking at is one, two, four, eight. Y'all understand? Okay. So this right here would, if I converted that, that would be a one. That would be what? Two, three, Four, five, 
six, seven, oops, eight, nine, A, B, C, what's that? D, E and L. Now notice I'm using four bits of binary to represent these 16 combinations. So what I can do is I can come up here and just write down a big old binary number. give this to you. Well, what I'm going to do, starting at the least significant digit, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to split this off in groups of four. One, two, three, 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 four. One, two, three. And I'll stick a zero. I can stick a zero on the left and not change the weight of the number. Then what I would do is I write down the hex equivalent for each one of those patterns. So I'd come up here and I'd write down a what? Huh? B, 5, 7, this is not a B, that's a D. D, this is a what? B, B, 5. So look how much easier it is for me to convey this big number to you, 5BB750, than it is for me to do 101, 101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101101
and I wanted to get that into I wanted to get that into binary. Well, here you can start either way. So I'd come down here. I'd write a three, right? You understand? I would write a B. I would write a seven. I'd write a nine. I'd write a four. Big four ridge. And I just converted that to binary. And those numbers have exactly the same way. They all equal each other. So if I was going to let my calculator do this for me. Not here, not here. If I wanted to take this, this is, if I needed that number in decimal for some reason, if I needed it in decimal for some reason, I wouldn't try to say, uh, I wouldn't try to use powers of 16. I wouldn't try to use that. What I would do is I would convert it to binary. Because binary, I don't have to remember 2 to the third, 2 to the second is, is, uh, is a, uh, in fact, 16, what? Which one? Well, this is not, this is not, this is not base 16 anymore. This is base 2. So in decimal, that one is, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, where's that? Base 2 well no this this is i don't know what you mean this is one two four eight i don't have enough room guys 16 32 64 128 uh, 2012 1024 uh, 2048 8192 16,384 32 huh which one 4096 thank you <laughs> right. I just did that to make sure you understand. So, 16,384, 32,576, huh? 768, 65,536, 131,072, and that's as far as I can go. But I've, I've run out. And then what I would do is I would add all those, I would just take those and add all those together. Now that's the way I would go to death mode. Going from hexadecimal to decimal, I would go through binary. Because binary, it's a lot easier to remember those powers of twos because all you have to do is just start with one and do whatever time. Double. That's all you got to do. Base 16, uh, this is 16 to the zero, which I know. Uh, this is 16 to the first. This is 16 squared. This is 16 to the third. Well, at 16 to the third, I'm already up to 65,536, right? You understand that? And then this would be 16 to the 4th. So I would have to know what 16 to the 4th was, and I, I would have to do it on a calculator. Well, if I'm going to do it on a calculator, I might as well let the calculator do it for me, right? You understand it. If I've got to raise 16 to the 4th to figure out what 16 to the 4th is, so I can multiply it by 3, then I might as well use the calculator. But, so what I would do is if I had a, a hex number, I would just convert it to binary. And I would do the one, two, four. So now I don't need a calculator, right? You understand? All I got to do is know how to add. Because all you got to do on base two, the power, the decimal equivalent of the base twos is just start at one and just keep doing what? Double it. Double it. Double it. Double it. And a lot of times you can double them in your head. And of course, if you dealt with it a long time, you would learn these, you would learn these ways, right? You uh, know? Huh? Let's take a five minute break. I'm deliberately splitting this apart so y'all could. Uh... So, what would be that binary number in hexadecimal? I'm representing hexadecimal.
start no significant left rise. Okay. I don't know what you mean. This is what I'm doing this for. For you, right? You understand? Well, I guess that's I asked that earlier. Now, if I wanted to see this in. So if I come over here and, and, I'm, and this, since I've got them in groups of threes, uh, I mean fours, it'll be. But I'm gonna do it in groups of threes. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. That's now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna convert this over to octal. So this would be one, three, two, six, five, four, and that would be base eight. Same number. Same number. They're exactly equal to each other. But what we're talking about is why do we use these high level, uh, uh, why is hexadecimal so popular? Well, hexadecimal is so popular because I can use a lot less digits to represent an extremely big number. Extremely big number. So, you know, this calculator here is hard to see, but uh, most calculators are limited to, uh, to displaying 10 digits. <laughs> so that's 10 digits of binary. The problem is, is that is the most significant bit is determined when we're dealing in calculators. The most significant bit is, is is considered to be what they call the sign bit. So I mean, if you enter all ten digits and you put a one out there in the tenth digit, it's going to give you a negative number. So that means you you sacrifice a lot of combinations to deal with to deal with sign numbers. So. Uh, what happens though is you do, if you entered in hex, then you've got you've got nine digits. Well, actually, you got almost ten digits worth of hex, which is going to be an extremely big number. So we even use it a lot uh, if I'm trying to do like math, binary math instead of getting it into decimal. So a lot of people want it to get it into decimal, do the math, and then they'll convert it back to binary. But if you understand binary math, binary math is actually easier than, than decimal. Math. So if you can get it to binary, you then add it and then convert it back into hex. Decimal, decimal written out in binary form. How many numbers? We can't do that. No, because the only way this works, the only way this works, if I can come up with a group of binary that has exactly the same combinations as a, a decimal. So uh, three bits of binary, I get exactly a combination. Well, in, in, in octal, every digit represents, I have eight combinations for every digit. For base 16, I got, I got 16. Four bits of binary represents exactly 16 combinations. Base 10, I can't do that with a group of, ten, of, of binary. Right? You understand? So we cannot go from binary to decimal. Like huh? There's no, you can't do a base four. I mean, a, 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 a base four, that's going to be four raised to some combination. You can do any base you want to, but you're going to have to convert the decimal number into that base. Huh? You cannot, you cannot, you cannot go from decimal to binary using this right here. You cannot go. You cannot go because there's no groups. So if I've got one bit of binary, I get two combinations. I forgot two bits of binary, I got what? Four combinations, right? Three bits, I got eight combinations. Four bits, I got 16 combinations. None of those come up to give me 10 combinations. So to be able to go directly from a base over to a base, you gotta have exactly the same number of combinations in those, in those, in, in, uh, so, so three bits of binary, eight combinations. Each digit of head, each digit of octal, eight combinations. So that means I can use three bits of binary to represent each octal digit. 
base 16, right? You understand, 16 combinations, four bits of binary, 16 combinations. So that's the only reason that works. So you don't say groups of binary to represent a weighted number. Now we do have a code, it's, but y'all understand what a code is? <clears throat> What's a code? Nobody knows what a code is. A code is when you use something to represent something else. So like I've got I've got a key on my keyboard called Z. Well, how in the world can can I have a Z? Well, what what the computer uses it uses what we call a key scan code. So when I hit the Z, the key the keyboard sends a code to me that says, okay, this represents it's the, it represents this symbol, right? You understand? And then the application that's processing that, it's, it's, it's looking for the codes. So you're typing an A, you're running Microsoft Office, you hit an A, you get the code for an A, but, but Microsoft Office, when it gets that binary code, why does it pop up on the screen? It pops up the pattern for an A, right? You understand? So we use codes all the time. So we use codes to represent things besides numbers. Everybody understand that? So we have key scan codes, we got ASCII code, we got Unicode, we got all these codes that I can use to represent no represent things that are not weighted. Right? Mm -hmm. So we use codes all the time in the military because you're trying to set encryption. When you encrypt, what are you doing? Coding. You're coding. That's exactly what you're doing. But what we're doing now, uh, the the encryption that we're using over here is 128 bit encryption. And it's basically supposedly unbreakable, but I think you get the government to take it's like, it's like putting crypto into a database. Right. It's, it's all it is. What you do is you you code it and then the other and then something else decodes it, right? You understand? So the application is decoding. So that means that's why when I'm flying a flight simulator, I can hit the F key and it lowers my flaps. Because elf is not an elf. It's a binary code that represents that key. And then the application can make it mean anything you want to. So Windows came out with these function keys across the top. Now those guys are, those are soft keys, but it's the same code, right? You understand? And, and what, what does the key mean? So we call this a soft keyboard, which means what? It changes. So yeah, so on your phone, you can switch that, that little thing on your screen. And when you hit that thing on the screen, it's the same position, but you hit that little thing and you change from numbers over to characters because when you hit that position on your screen, it gets a lot. It gets a code. It says this position represents this code and all you can say is say now this code means this, right? You understand, depending on what screen you use. So we use codes all the time. So we got a code that represents decimal. It's called binary coded decimal. It is not weighted. It is not weighted. You can't use one, two, four, eight, sixteen. It's not weighted. It's a code. We call it DCD, but it's not a weighted number system. And I think that's the next thing they probably cover in the text. We start getting into codes. Once we get out of number systems, we start talking about codes. So I can go on the internet and, and look for the key scan code uh, for these computers. We might even get the, the code for the iPhone. But this will be the, so I'm going to put uh, up here, I'm going to just search for a key scan code. And it, there was a key scan code for Linux. And here's the key scan code, code right here. Now, probably they're going to give me this in hexadecimal. So here's the keyboard right here. So these are the key scan codes right here. But it's in hexadecimal, right? You see that? I think it's a code. No, it's a code. Let me find the actual code. Well, no, for keyboards that are compatible with the Windows operating system. But odds are this key, these key scans, these key cans. These key scan codes were developed by IBM, but the codes are not copyrighted, which means what? Huh? Anybody. Anybody can use them. So you got a cell phone, you know, uh, uh, that can be run in different operating systems made by the same company because 
when you tap on that screen, if they know the code they get back, then, then the operating system can translate that. So the key scan codes for this keyboard right here, we call it a QWERTY keyboard. You know what it's called QWERTY? Yeah, it's wrong with letters right here, so it's not an acronym. So that's how it got the name QWERTY. Right well, what we do, when I press this, it sends a code, and it, it, then it's up to the application that's running the program at the time to determine what that code means. Right? Does that make sense? Uh, this is an open technology. So that means, you know, these computers, we can run all different types of operating systems on it because all it is is a code, right? Y'all understand? And then we have what we call the ASCII code. Let's see what they cover in the book next. Well, they cover, what, what's the first code they covered in the textbook? Gray code. The problem we have with the binary code is that when I start counting in binary, when we start counting in binary, and what we have in digital is we have something called propagation delay. So these counters uh, that, that actually do the counting, these are software counters. And the problem is, is the more bits that you have changed, the longer it takes. So if I go from a zero to a one, only one bit change, right? You understand? Now, if I go to a two, how many bits had to change? This one had to change to a zero. This one had to change to a one. Okay. So we had two changes. Uh, then when I go to a three, only one bit change. But then when I go to a four, we had a three bit change. So what happens is the bigger the numbers I have, the more the bits I have to change. And then we have a a take something called propagation delay, which means it takes time to propagate through the count. Does that make sense? Okay. Everybody understand? So what the, and, and this is also true when I count down. So when I count down, uh, this would this would take uh, this one would go to a zero. This would go to a one one. That would be a three bit change, right? No, no one's saying yes or no. So that means counting up and counting down. How long it takes to count would depend on the size of the, the number of digits. And what would ha what was happening was that we would start counting things that the counters couldn't keep up with. So what they wanted to do is they wanted to come up with a code where no matter which direction you change, it is a code. That means it is not weighted, guys. It does not go one, two, four, eight. It is a code. It's called the gray code. The gray code is a counting code. Do they show the gray code in the textbook? You know, I don't know. I'd have to look up the gray code. I don't have the gray code floating around in my mind. <clears throat> It goes up to 15. So this is the gray code. The gray code is over here. BCD is right here. We're not looking at BCD right now. We'll talk about that in a minute. But let's just look at binary, decimal, and gray code. Well, binary, this is a weighted number system. Every bit holds a weight base rate to some power. And if we follow this down through here using four bits, we have 16 combinations, or which you can see on the first pattern. And I'd be nervous so I can record this. So when we look at the first pattern right here, we see when we go from a zero to one, we had a one bit change. From a one to two, we had a two bit change. To a three, we had a one bit change. Here we had a four bit change. Here we had a one bit change. Here we had a two bit change, right? Y'all understand that? And if I count backwards, it's doing that. When we look at the gray code, this is the code for a zero. This is the code for a one. This is the code for a two. It's not weighted. It's a code. Okay, so when I go from a gray code count of a two, how many bits change? One. One. When I go from the code for a two to the code for a three, how many bits change? One. one. When I go the code from a key to a code to a four, how many bits change? One. So the gray code is a code. It is not weighted. We can't do the one, two, four, eight anymore. It's a code. It's, it's a binary pattern. code. Huh? It's a pattern. It's a code. Is there a specific pattern? I know that the only common thing is that it changes one digit every time only, but there's no pattern to it. It's just what they did to figure out. I'm sure there's a pattern, but I, don't, I had thought about it. But what you need, you don't really know. But in a gray code is something that you either you'd have to learn or you'd have to look it up in a chart. 
but what we're doing now. So if I go backwards, so I'm sitting out here. This is the code for a nine. If I go back, how many bits change? One. So no matter which direction the counter is counting, you only have a walk or one bit change. So that means every time one bit, so uh, the gray code is a high speed counting code. So we have gray code counters up there with encoders for our motor speeds and uh, precision and stuff like that. But once I get it inside my computer, we're going to have to get it over to what it actually represents, right? You understand? So we just normally we build what we call tables. So computers can rip through tables real good. I know what a table is, right? Where you say, put something on this side and say what it's equal over there. So computers love tables. Computers love scanning tables. <laughs> so all we would do is we'd bring in the gray code, and then that would point to a chart on a table, and it would get the weight. But it's a code. It's not weighted. Everybody understand that? So gray code is what type of code? It's a counting code. It's a counting code. It's a high speed counting code. So when you get out in the industry and you start dealing with these counters, you need to understand if this is if it's, if it's a high speed count, counting code or not. And more and more we're letting we're letting our PLC do the counting for us anyway. And this is where we really get into problems. Because the PLC, uh, the counters are software, they're programs. So one advantage that hardware has always had over software is hardware, if we implement it with hardware, it's faster. Because we don't have to run through a program. Uh, so just about all your PLCs are starting to put a, a hardware counter on there. They call that a high speed counter. Because your software counters can't keep up with it. So I think the I don't think the 1000 has a high speed count on it. Usually the newer ones. So the 1100 uh, we have from uh, Alan Bradley has a high speed counter in it. I think it's got two. And the uh, the 1200s, the little Siemens 1200s has has a high speed count on it. But that's implemented by hardware. ASCII code, the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. So this this code was a developed by America. And it's an acronym. So it's an acronym, a, a true name, a true meaning of an acronym is you take a phrase and then you you use every, every the digit of first letter, the first letter of every first word. So usually you drop the four, you drop the small words unless it unless it creates an acronym. And then what we do is we use that to create another word. So we call that ASCII. So ASCII is a true acronym. That makes sense. You hear people use those acronyms all the time. Uh, but what has happened is uh, we, we take the first, what, so to be a true acronym, it's got to create another word, right? Does that make sense? But in computers, we don't do that. Computers, we take the first letter off every word, and if you don't make a word, we just repeat the letter. We got some neat ones, KG, ASCII, but then we got something called PCD. We call it an acronym, but in life it's not a true acronym. You still heard that word? Huh? Still in slide here. Still in here. Still in slide here. Slide in the content. It's in the content and the lecture slides. So ASCII, the original ASCII was a seven bit code, which means it would give us 127 combinations. How do I know that? Well, you can calculate the number of combinations available in any base just by taking the number of digits that you use and raise it to that power. So if I came over here and I raised two to the seventh, two to the seventh, it would come up and give me what, 128. So there's 128 combinations in the ASCII code chart, in the 7 bit ASCII code chart. It is a signal sent to the computer from a keyboard, and this is not exactly true. Uh, IBM chose not to use the ASCII code, even though they could. 
I think I've chosen not to use Ashley Perry. They chose to use their own people. But, but it was non copyrighted, so just about all these computers use that code as far as I know. But uh, keyboards don't use Ashley Perry. But I had printers, I had the internet. A lot of people think internet. So when I send you, uh, we program in the internet in a text based language called HT, uh, HTML, which is Hypertext Markup. And basically, what I do is I send you a bunch of text, and then your web browser puts the page together depending on how I tell it to put it together. And that's basically the way HTML works. But they had to have the ability to represent letters, right? You understand the whole alphabet. Not only the whole, whole, whole alphabet, but we had to had to had to have the ability to do both upper and lowercase letters. Then we got these uh, symbols that we use all the time, the question marks, the exclamation marks, the commas, the colons. So if I'm going to send you text, I got to have the ability to do all that stuff, right? And then I got to have the ability to control the device that I'm sending the information to. Uh, so uh, what we do on, on old printers, uh, we don't uh, use it much anymore, is we had to tell the printer to do a line feed and a carriage return. Well, what we'd have to do is we'd have to we either have to do it automatically with so many letters, or we'd have to tell in my document when I hit or hit a carriage return, we'd have to send a code to the printer to tell it to do what? To not only move the carriage back over to the left, but also do what? Advance it one line. So we had to have those codes too. So the seven bit uh, the seven bit code con consists of control codes, and it consists of the alphabet. And it consists of uh, some symbols. So this is the ASCII code, 128 combinations. Now normally it's given in hexadecimal. It's a binary code, but they give it to you in hexadecimal. Why? Because it's easier for you to have to right? So uh, here's an uppercase A. And what I would do is your most significant digits across the top, your least significant digits on the bottom. So the ASCII code for an A would be 41 hex. Or this would actually this would actually be the code for the letter A. Here's uppercase A. I should have said uppercase A. So here's an uppercase A. Let me change colors. Uppercase A. So I read the column number first, and then I read the row number second. Column four, row one, which is in hex. But ASCII code is not a hexadecimal code, it's a binary code. So this is the ASCII code for the letter A. It is not weighted, it's a code, right? You understand that? It's a code. That if I'm in, if I'm expecting a letter, if I'm expecting a character to come in, right? You understand? If I'm expecting a character to come in, then this is the code he'll send me. Uh, so let's go up here, and uh, I'm going to bring up Microsoft Office. Now, Microsoft Office uses a uh, Unicode, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. Here's Microsoft Word, and I'm going to be flying over here doing that. But I'm instead of me saying I'm going to insert a letter, I'm going to say I'm going to insert a symbol because these are symbols anyway. Okay, sorry. And when I come over here, I say I'm going to insert. I'm going to insert a symbol, okay, and then I'm going to say more symbols, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the uppercase A. Is it here somewhere? Uppercase A, the code, 41. So that means when I hit... When I hit my keyboard, it gives me one code. It comes in and says you hit the letter A. Then Microsoft Office interprets that to 41, which is the code. It's the ASCII it code. It goes automatically to hex because it's the most convenient. Well, it's binary. It the but computer has the ability to display display things like they're not really are, right? You understand? Yeah. So if it's going to give me a large binary number, 99.9% of the time, it's going to give it to you in hexadecimal. Is it a default? It's a default. Okay. Uh, some, some charts give you the ASCII code in decimal, and it's totally confusing. I mean, it's totally confusing. 
<laughs> because you can't do a row column. You got to do, you got to so do the code. Did. You, huh? You got to go with that chart like you just did. Yeah, that, that not with decimal. Decimal, they'll have to give you the A and they'd have to give you the decimal number because you can't set it up on a, you can't set it up on a most significant, least significant digit type. So ASCII code charts should be in binary. A lot of charts, they'll give it to you in decimal. And it'd be, uh, they'll say 65. So 41, if I converted that to decimal, would be 65. Now, how do I do that in IL? Well, I know that this is 16 to the first, and I know my 16 multiplication table. I know 4 times 16 is 64. So 64 plus 1 is 65. So there's a lot of hex, there's a lot of hex numbers, especially 8 bit, that I can do in my head because I, I know, I know, I know my 16 multiplication table. So 8 bit numbers, 8 bit numbers are just pretty good. This is a code called Unicode, but Unicode adopted ASCII since ASCII was the standard code for so long. Uh, Unicode is a 16-bit code. Well, it's actually, uh, this is called Unicode 16. It's actually got a 32-bit code too. Uh, it's got a Unicode A, which is a, which is ASCII. And then it's got a Unicode 16, which is what we use, what we use here. So that's 16 combinations. Uh, the problem with ASCII is that we can only represent the Latin alphabet. How many people use the Latin alphabet in the world? There's a lot, but but what you need to do is if we're going to use the internet, then we've got to open this up to a lot more a lot more languages, right? You all understand that. So Unicode gives us 65,536 uh, character combinations, which is basically uh, probably 90% of the of the written languages out there. So now it allows us to have websites in Japanese. When the internet first came yeah. out. The only language it used was what? English. Uh, but then they moved it over to an international type thing. Uh, so Unicode, 65,536. There's a bunch of them that comes with, uh, comes with, uh, uh in the Explorer. But you, you always, uh, if, if you're on the internet and you get to a site that it don't support that character set, then it'll ask you. I've read a gray box pop up that says you need to download that character set. Well, that's Unicode, so you can add, you add to that. But what I wanted to show you, even now, we're still using ASCII. So I could go to any one of these letters up here, and uh, so a B would be 42, but that's hex, right? You understand? So the ASCII code chart, what we would do is we would do what? What can I do with ASCII code chart? Uh, the first two columns, these are control codes. So here's line feed. Uh, carriage return, knowledge, novel knowledge, inquire, ring bell. So the old printers used to have bells on with ring, backspace, uh, carriage return, uh, start of transmission, end of transmission. So there's a lot of, these are all control codes. So we can control these devices that I'm sending this information to. So I'm a, on my internet. And <laughs> so uh, what would a carriage return be? So here's a carriage return, right? So it's going to be a zero D. A line phase would be a zero A. So uh, sometimes you can see this in the HTML code where they put a percent sign. So if you're looking at HTML and you see a percent sign, the next the next thing beside that is actually an ASCII code, and it's usually a control code. Y'all with me? So how would I do my name? Well, first of all, I'd start off with Rick. So what would I put? Uh, so uh, do it in line. Good job. Five, two, and then I. So I'd look at lowercase i. So what did it be? 69, right? Here it is. 69. That would be a lowercase c. Here c would be 63. And h would be 68. And that would be the ASCII for my name. So if I was to go in there and, and uh, of course, on Word, you would have to do... Uh, you have to do it in uh, I can't do it on this computer because I don't have a numeric keypad. 
the code for the numeric keypad and the code for the, co the numbers across the top are different. Uh, if I had a computer, I'll have to show you all that in class. But, uh, there's a way that you can type in those codes uh, without going into the chart. So you hit the Alt key. But when you hit the Alt key, you have to hit the decimal equivalent of the code. So we just have to do that. Uh, the problem we had with this is there was a lot of characters uh, that we didn't use. So what IBM came out, they came out with what they called an enhanced gate uh, code, which was an eight-bit code, uh, which is a 256-character code. I don't know if that's in this PowerPoint or not. Which is called it's called an enhanced that. I know it's a long time to go to lunch yet. Well, what they did with uh, enhanced ASCII, ah, what happened? It took me to the link for the site, it didn't pop the picture up there. I'll try to find a picture of that after after lunch. But what they did is they added a bunch of things that we can do to add up that we use a lot, uh, like a lot of fractions, like one half, one quarter. They they added codes for those. Uh, they added codes for some of the Greek symbols, like uh, micro. We use that a lot in electronics. Uh, a long time ago, what we'd have to use, we'd use a lowercase u for micro. So, because we didn't have a law, we didn't have a code for my um, Ohm. So, so, what we used to have to do, we used to, we used to have to spell out Ohm. Why is that? Because we didn't have a code for Omega. We didn't have a code for Omega. Uh, but when they added the enhanced ASCII code, they added a code for Omega. They added some fractions. Uh, uh, no, this is Japanese. This is, this is wrong. This is not enhanced, Betsy. I'll have to find it, guys. Let's go ahead and break for lunch. We're back at 1230, right?